الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله بعثه الله رحمة للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا فصلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Dear respected brothers and sisters As you know that these days the whole world is talking about what? About coronavirus. I've been in too many countries in the last maybe two months and wherever you go people are talking about coronavirus and countries is stopped, blocked their borders or close their borders and they are not willing to receive more people. Uh, countries stopped their citizens from traveling to other countries. <coughs> other countries, even Hajj and Umrah, even Umrah now, Hajj, we, inshallah, the problem will be solved. But even Umrah is stopped now. And <coughs> countries are losing billions <coughs> of dollars. And there are so many conspiracies. Some people say that this is part of the biological war, America waged against China. And some people say, no, this, is, this virus was made by the Chinese in order to threaten the world, but it went out of their control. And there are so many rumors that are going on. And some people say that they know the cure, but they don't want to sell it to people except after some time in order to get more money from them. And everyone is talking about it. Everyone is scared. Everyone is talking. Every single country is talking about measures to protect its people from it or their people from it. And they are talking about measures on different levels. Subhanallah my dear respected brothers and sisters. And so far, thousands of people have died and tens of thousands of people are threatened or under the threat of death. And everyone is really worried. Everyone is really worried. And subhanAllah, there are so many lessons that can be taken out of this. The first lesson is the reality of this life. The reality of this life. Is it really worth it? We put so much effort to get into this life, to get into this dunya, to gain this dunya, to gain wealth, uh, even to protect our health, to build buildings, to build the future of our children, the future of our countries and so on and just a small virus. Even they say that this is an undeveloped living being, the virus. It is not even a cell. It is not a, even a cell. Yes? And no one is able to defeat that. It is killing thousands of people just like this. SubhanAllah. Is it really worth it? This life, is it really worth it? You might be healthy, you might be wealthy, and then you might just be hit by this virus or so many other diseases and just within days you will just vanish. Think about it. Is this life really worth it? No, it's not really worth it. And subhanAllah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah Jalla wa Ala told us this in Quran, in the Quran, in so many places, without even reminding us by such viruses and such diseases. يعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل زرع أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصطفى ثم يكون حطانا. وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ونقصر من الله ولوات وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور سبحان الله نودت that this 
الدنيا من سورة الحديد remember know that this life is just amusement it's just a time to play with and to boast over others with the wealth that you have with the health that you have but it is the reality of this dunya is nothing but like a farm and then the rain comes on this farm and then it grows and people will be oh wondering about it they will be happy with it and then the leaves become dry and they, they just fell down and as if they were not there and then Allah Jalla says dunya this life is nothing but a deception this life is nothing but a deception and Allah Jalla answered this the question about so what is the value of this life why are we here why are we here Allah Jalla answered this fundamental question again in so many verses in the Quran and one of them in Surah al kahf that we read in Jum'ah when Allah Jalla says inna ja'allama ala al-ardi zinatan laha we have created this earth we decorated this earth yes we made everything on this earth a zina amusement to decorate it what for just for one reason in order to test human beings who have the best deeds and therefore, my dear respected brothers and sisters, those incidents like the coronavirus, the SARS virus before, and the plague that had before and killed thousands of people, those incidents and those, as they say, atrocities, they remind us with the reality of this life, that it is not really worth it. It is not really too worth it that you spend your time and effort and energy and you think about nothing but this life. How you gain it, how you collect more of it, how you build the future of your children as they say. How to build, how to have that building, how to have that amount of money, how to have that car and how to have that job life is not for this yes those are means to survive in this life in a very dignified way but those are not the ultimate aim should they not be the ultimate aim of any human being yes because if we do not have that balance if we do not understand the reality of this life you might be collecting and gathering this dunya, gathering, 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 and neglecting the real life after your death. And then all of a sudden, a small virus like this will kill you. And then you will regret. SubhanAllah, what did I do in my life? That's why the Prophet said, If the dunya is equal in the sight of Allah to a sip of water, just a small drink of water, Allah wouldn't give. Allah Jalla Ala, sorry, if the dunya is equal in the sight of Allah Jalla Ala, a wing of a mosquito, Allah Jalla Ala wouldn't give a disbeliever a sip of water, which means that this dunya is worth nothing in the sight of Allah Jalla Ala. However, as I said, it doesn't mean that we leave this dunya. No, we take from this dunya what helps us to achieve our akhirah and to live in a dignified way. Please do remember this. So this is the first lesson that we need to take from this coronavirus, you know, atrocity or syndrome. 
Yeah. The second important lesson that we need to take from this. Subhanallah, the Chinese president in September 2009, yeah, in the 70th, uh, the, the, the anniversary of the 70th of, of uh, the communities, the, the ruling community party, yeah, being in power. What did he say? And in front of him, his army, weapons, and they were challenging the whole world. He said this, there is no force that will shake the foundation of this great nation. SubhanAllah, what is it? What did he say again? There is no force. Yeah, there is no force. He didn't say on earth because he doesn't believe in Allah. Yeah, he said there is no force whatsoever that will shake the foundation of this great nation. And Allah Jalla Allah just in maybe a month or less than a month, Allah Jalla Allah sent what? A small virus that shakes what? The entire nation. Yes or no? And now, even as someone, a commentator said, now we became, he said, because of this, we became racist towards Chinese because they were showing some pictures that a Chinese person coming and then people saw that he's a Chinese. Oh, he might be holding the coronavirus and everyone was running away. Subhanallah. And people stopped importing goods from China. People stopped traveling to China. People stopped any kind of relationship with China. Even they were talking about post, that they were afraid <coughs> of receiving post from China. SubhanAllah. And they are struggling. What can we do with this virus? Now, apart from the conspiracy, whether they made it or they did not make it, but the reality is it get out of their control, SubhanAllah. And this shows the power of Allah. Don't ever challenge Allah. Don't ever show arrogance. Do you remember that misal called the challenger? Yeah? Because even the name, they gave it a name. Yeah? The, the rocket that they send it to, okay, I think Mars or, yeah? They called it what? The challenger. Yeah? It challenges. Whom they were thinking to challenge and within seconds it was destroyed. It fell down. This is a very important lesson. I was talking to some brothers. I said, can atheists find the solution for, for this coronavirus? Can science find the solution for coronavirus? Let the whole world come together to solve this problem. They might solve it because Allah is merciful. Allah is merciful. Yeah, they might solve it. But are they safe from another virus? We have the SARS virus, we have the birds virus before that. And it is continuing because Allah Jalla Ala wants to tell human beings, don't ever challenge me, I am your Lord. SubhanAllah. This is another important lesson, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Yes? And that's why Allah Jalla Ala, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, al abamatu Allah Jalla doesn't like anyone to challenge his honor, his majesty, his magnificence. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This is another important lesson. Another important lesson, my dear respected brothers and sisters, and there are so many lessons, which is, it is a very unfortunate that Muslim countries when they were talking about measures to protect themselves or their citizens from this virus, no one ever, even the country of Islam and Sharia, as they say, without mentioning the name of that country, you know whom I'm talking about, they never mention something related to Allah. They, as if, astaghfirullah as if Allah Jalla is not there. This is a very Muslim country. Yeah? They didn't mention 
that all we advise people to rely on Allah, to put their trust in Allah. Yeah? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوْكَلُوا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are believers, what? Huh? Put your trust in Allah. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَأَيَّمْ سَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا تَعْشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ If Allah Jalla wa Ala touches you with anything that harms you, no one can remove it except Him, Jalla wa Ala. What is this in our discourse? In the Muslim's discourse, it is not there. Subhanallah, wear these masks, do this, clean your hands, be careful, don't go in these places, etc, etc. No one says, the Prophet said, whoever said, Bismillah alladhi la yadurru ma'a ismihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fi s-sama' wa huwa s-sami'u al-alim in the morning three times, in the evening three times, nothing will harm him. Nothing will harm him. Yeah, the Prophet وسلم, says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Three times. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Three times. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Three times. In the morning, it will protect you against everything. No, we don't believe in this because science. Subhanallah al-Azim. Tell science to find a solution for this. Then. Subhanallah. So, my dear respected brothers and sisters, this is another dimension. Yeah? <coughs> Another, so protect yourself by the divine protection. Yes, use the materialistic protection, but make sure that you use the most important protection, which is what? The divine protection. Relying on Allah, making the supplication, the dhikr, when you enter your house, when you come out of your house, when you go to bed, read Ayat al-Kursi. Ayat al-Kursi by itself alone is the strongest protection against jinn, against diseases. Read Surah Fatiha all the time. The Prophet وسلم, says that it is cured. Surah Al-Fatiha. It is a cure, the best cure, the strongest cure. Many of us brothers and sisters, oh, I have headache. Yeah, go get paracetamol. Before thinking of paracetamol, think of what? Think of Allah and the treatment that He has given you. Read Surah Fatiha. Take paracetamol. I'm not telling you don't take it. But read Surah Fatiha first. Read Quran on yourself. Say, Ya Allah, cure me. With coronavirus, even unfortunately, the very Muslim countries, maybe because they are embarrassed to say, rely on Allah, or they were embarrassed to say that let us all make dua to Allah Jalla Ala, that Allah Jalla Ala removes this calamity, and so on. Anyway, just because of time. Another important lesson. SubhanAllah, look at the Islamic hygiene. Yeah? This is a big issue, the Islamic hygiene. They say, make sure you clean your hands. I remember one time in one country, they said, <coughs> Muslims, they waste a lot of water because they go and make wudu and they waste water. And now they say, make sure you wash your hands. Yeah, okay. Islamic hygiene. When we go to the toilet, there were some people, they were mocking us because we clean our private parts by water. And I remember certain diseases, they say, make sure you bleed by water. Yeah, some people have suffered from certain things, and they say to them, they advise them, make sure when you clean yourself, clean by water. This is one thing, subhanAllah. Even, even, there is a big hoo-ha about dead meat. Yes, and stunned meat. And they say, oh, Muslims, they kill. They slaughter the animals, they have no mercy. And now they are talking about dead meat. Is it a reason for certain diseases? Because the blood, which is the main carrier for bacteria, is running and it uh, remains in the dead meat. Subhanallah. Look at this. Yeah? And we are not allowed to eat dogs, we are not allowed to eat rats, we are not allowed to eat certain things, we are not allowed to eat certain animals, pigs, etc. 
and now they are talking maybe the source of this was rats eating rats maybe the source was this we don't know but definitely when Allah Jalla Ala gave us those guidelines Allah Jalla Ala knows that this is for our protection as human beings Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum min kulli dam fastaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafuru al-rahim الحمد لله عبدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله بعثه الله رحمة للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا فصلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين I was coming a few days from one country in the airport I don't want to mention that country it's a good country الحمد لله men wearing me up men yeah, wearing niqab and they said subhanallah now they stopped women from wearing niqab and now men are wearing niqab yeah but that is allowed that is not a problem because of what health reasons but women to wear niqab yeah for a religious reason oh this is a sign of extremism this is a sign this is we need to stop this this is degrading for women and this is and so on, subhanAllah. Allah Jalla wa'ala sometimes shows people signs to humiliate them. And he shows them signs of his, what of his commandments. And now they are encouraging, make sure you wear masks, especially if you are in a public place and so on. I wonder what do they say now about those countries who banned women from wearing niqab. This is another reflection to reflect upon. One, the last key message, my dear respected brothers and sisters, what happens reminds us of the reality of this dunya. And we should be thankful to Allah Jalla Ala that we as Muslims understand the reality of this dunya. We understand the reality of those diseases. We go back to Allah Jalla Ala and those illnesses, they are rahma from Allah Jalla Ala because Allah Jalla Ala is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim because Allah Jalla Ala says in the Quran فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا وَلَا تُنْقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Allah Jalla Ala wants to afflict people with certain tests so they might go back to him وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ but the disbelievers their hearts become what? become hard instead of melting instead of becoming soft and we should remember this, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And the last message, we should be proud. We should be proud that we are the worshippers of Allah. We know Him. We recognize Him. We acknowledge who He is. We understand the purpose of life. We understand what He wants. Allah Jalla says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَانِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ Allah Jalla Ala gave us the protection from all of these things by going back to him, remembering him, reading the Quran. This is a big ni'mah. Others don't know this ni'mah. And at the end, if we die, we know that we are going to Allah Jalla Ala, the most merciful. But those who do not believe in Allah Jalla Ala, they are scared of death because they don't know what will happen to them. Look at the ni'mah, the bounties that Allah Jalla has granted us as Muslims. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam said to us, remember death, because it creates the balance in your life. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we should be always thankful to Allah Jalla We should always be with Allah Jalla Ala. Allahumma ya hayu ya qayyum. Ya badi'a al-samawati wal-ardu. Allahumma inna nas'aluka. أن تغفر لنا ذنوبنا كلها جبها وجلها ما علمنا منها وما لم نعلم اللهم يا حي يا قيوم يا بديع السماوات والأرض اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وعاجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وعاجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وعنفوا بعهد الله إلى عاهدكم ولا تنفوا الإيمان بعد توكيدها وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله